for that. Right, we're doing something slightly different today. Um, but before we start, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is, in fact, my baldy head. Um, I had a bit of a moment of madness where I decided to, to shave it all off. So throughout this interview, so that you're concentrating on the questions and the answers, rather than my baldy head, I'm going to wear a hat. So um, what we've got is today we've got Stuart McLaren, who's a long-time member of Brunsfield. Uh, Stuart McLaren. Stuart is the current champion at Brunsfield. Uh, how many is it you won, Stuart? Four. Four, four championships. Not bad. Um, he had an amazing year last year. Uh, so we're going to ask him a few questions about his year as a whole um, and a couple of events on the course, but also a couple of events off the course. So, Stuart, uh, can you just rattle off for me your success last year? Yep. Uh, started with a couple of top 15s in Scottish events. Um, moved on to the club championship, as you've already mentioned, successfully managed to defend uh, the title um, for the fourth year in a row. Week after, moved on um, to the next national event, which was over in Fife at East of Scotland at London Lynx. Managed to um, go the distance and have, have, a, have the first win, I suppose, of the year um, on, the, on the Scottish circuit there. Next on was Lothian's, um, runner-up in the stroke play and the match play stages there and end up winning the Scottish um, amateur qualifying at Crail. It was quite nice um couple of days. Eric, also Brunsfield member, shout out to him, finished a little one-two in the podium for Brunsfield members, which was a nice little successful weekend. Um, unfortunately, match play stages didn't go as well. End of the season for me personally, um, won the South East District as well, um, West Linton, as, um, the end of August. So that was a kind of nice way to cap off the individual individual year. Brilliant. That's uh, a pretty phenomenal a phenomenal effort. Um, so you did have such a good year. I just want to ask, so you can see the members of Brunsfield, uh, how do you prepare for a season like that? How do you prepare before you're going into a season knowing You've got so much golf, obviously, this year's slightly different because there won't be much, but how do you prepare generally for a season? I think I always have certain competitions that, I, that are in the diary um, when the kind of calendar year hits. This Last year was slightly different. Um, I'm sure you'll touch upon it later on, but it was probably the last full year of being able to do a, a full circuit um, without the ball and chain kind of dragging me behind. Uh, dragon behind me, sorry. So um, it was it was a much of a try to figure out what what I'm going to play and um, just prepare myself as best I possibly can. Well, but practice wise, do you do anything out of the ordinary? Do you have a fitness regime? Do you have a fitness program, or do you? Do you I know that you go away. Um, I know you go away on holiday um, every year. Um, is that yeah. is that help? So in, t in, in terms in terms of practice wise, I'm not a big practicer through the winter. Um, I think everyone can kind of agree there's nothing worse than standing on the range hitting hundreds of balls when the rain's coming sideways in your face. Um, I, I'm ca a captain of the Winter League at Brunsfield, um, so I try and keep the competitive edge through those matches. Normally tend to be six to eight matches between October and January. Um, come February, that's when I start to try and get into the more practice routine. You're aware yourself, I try and drag you out into the course as much as possible because, again... Which I, I enjoy, by the way, I do enjoy it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just not a big... I just don't enjoy spending too much time in the range when I don't need to be. And I think if you're going to get the best practice in, it's going to be on the golf course itself, um, mm -hmm. more of a live environment. So I tend to, as you know, spend most of my time with you and tweak small things rather than the overall overall swing itself. Um Luckily enough, I don't. I, I'm not normally struggling in lots of areas at the one time, so we can solely focus on on, on one part. Yeah, and we all, we go we go to Portugal. We go to Portugal every year. It's something we've been doing for a number of years um, with a few of the Brunswick members. How do you feel getting away and getting a wee bit of warmth um, at the beginning of the year helps? I think it's brilliant. As you say, warmth, actual different different environment. Um, there's a group of guys that come with us, so it can, kind of keeps a competitive edge. We've got, the, got those competitions within the groups. Um, 
and yeah, it just there's different caliber caliber of players in terms of handicap wise, but. Um, it makes it pretty tough when you've got guys getting shots and actually you have to play really, really well to hang in there, don't you? Especially when you're not used to the courses at all. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, we, as you say, we've got we've got our own personal battles when we're out there, which, um, yeah, it's kind it's of... It's a big peaks. For everybody that wants to know, it's a bit of peaks at the moment, but um, that's me yeah. clinging on, clinging on. Um, just so... Going back to last year, how do you, how did you, or when did you think it was going to be a good year? You must have had a wee turning point where you thought, you know, this is, I'm playing really well, I'm hitting the ball well, when, this is going to be a good year. When do you think that might have been? I think I was, I was playing okay in Portugal and went out. I'd played a little bit more than I'd probably played February, March time. Um, April came and that's when the season really kicks off on the national circuit. And I started off with two, I think it was a 13th and a 12th finish. And to start off your first two competitions of the year, it's not too bad. Um, moved on, start of had a had a little bit of an off May, but there, I don't play too many events um, at that point. Just kind of more tidying up certain areas of the game. It was kind of more when I got into June. Um, I had an eleventh finish at the Tennant Cup at Glasgow Gales. The next week, I won the club championship, and the week after that, that's when. I won the East of Scotland, so that was the that was the aim for the year, just to try and get a win on on the circuit, and yeah, managed to get that quite early on. So anything after that, I suppose, was a real bonus. Good. Um, um, so for just again for the members that are watching, there's two, obviously two different types of game. There's a stroke play and there's a match play. What about your approach to both? Do you have a different mentality when you're going into stroke play and a different mentality when you're going into match play? Just explain what you think when you go into these events. Um. I'm quite an aggressive player, as you know, in both formats of the game. Um, when it comes to match play, I'm probably a little bit more aggressive. Um, I know I'm going to make a few birdies throughout the course of the round, so I can always kind of rely on that. And if you have one little blunder, it's not going to cause a long-term damage on the scorecard. Um, so I need to kind of remember when I come to certain holes or certain put myself in certain positions just to take a step back and realise where you're at, what is, what's the bigger picture here. So, um, yeah, I think it's just try to, the mentality of being able to actually take a step back before you go into, or into your... So do you think you're a lot more aggressive with your match play? I would say so, yeah. Okay, good man. Um, so you've obviously been successful. It's been a period of time you've been successful. You were a good junior. You, you got up to the kind of... Um, how old are you now, Stuart? 25. 25, right, okay. So, yeah, you were a good junior. You then got into the kind of early 20s. Now you're mid-20s. But when you started out, I know you played at Ravelston. Um, yeah. Who was your influence when you were younger and who is your influence now? Um, influence growing up was my granddad. Um, he he got me into the game. He was a Ravelston member as well. Um, three, four handicapper, so a pretty... Pretty handy, handy player. Um, he was he, he would drive me to ev every event. So at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning, he'd be he'd be driving me down to Ravelston as a as a ten eleven year old boy. So yeah, growing up for sure. Um, Tell me yeah. the story about your progress for Ravelston. How you knew you were getting better. So I remember <laughs> I remember walking around Ravelston with you one day, and if you're if. If anyone knows Ravels in the course, every hole's got a slight ridge. Um, and my goal was to make the ridge off the tee on every single hole. Um, so just so people don't know, some of the holes at Ravelston, the ridge is not very far off the tee. And some of the holes, it, it, it is quite a long way off the tee. So, yeah, that, was, that would show your progress. Yeah, so there was, I think, that, that, that definitely um, showed the progress. And then... I was lucky. I was fortunate enough to be able, allowed to be playing the the men's club championship growing up as a junior. So I started off in in the B category. Um, I think it was about 10, 10 hand or twelve handicaps to twenty four. Got beat first round in the the first time I played in it, and then I slowly started to progress and managed to to get up to the A's and actually won the Ravelston Club Championships um, 
actually before I even won my first run through one as well. So yeah, that's going to so, be cool. So yeah. your granddad was your influence when you were a kid. He's the one that's helped you get where you are. What about yeah. what about more recently? Has there been anybody that's that's influenced you other than me, obviously? Um, because you, I know you've got friends who are members of Run Seal too, um, who obviously will push you, aren't at your standard, but will are very good golfers. Yeah, I think obviously, I would say, bar myself, you're probably my biggest critic. Um, but it's a good thing. Um, it definitely put, makes yourself have a few reality checks when you think you're maybe getting a little bit too far ahead of yourself. Um, biggest influ- influencer. Probably, to be fair, it's probably not on the golf course. Um, I'd probably say biggest influence is probably my uncle. He's taken over that kind of step from my, from my granddad. So he's kind of there for the encouragement whenever I'm playing. He's always on the phone asking how I'm doing and always giving me that little bit of motivation. So um, I'd say probably he's the biggest, biggest one for me just now, currently ongoing. But as you say, the guys at Brunsfield have been amazing and um, not just for me but for any of the guys that are playing well nationally locally they're always supporting you so i think the whole membership as a whole definitely has has, has brilliant. brilliant so just a quick one um you got married this year um how does natalie feel about you playing so much golf and um how do you think it might affect how much golf you play and where you're going to be because natalie's magic but um She's gonna obviously not let you play all the time. Yeah, she uh, yeah, she's not the biggest fan of golf, that's for sure. Um I jokingly said to her I think yesterday, the day before, that with what's going on just now I'm saving up all my golf days. So when it comes oh. to later on in the year, um I can get her in the course. But to be honest with you, um she's she's pretty relaxed. I'm I kinda of take it for granted a lot when I'm away. I think last year there was 12 weekends in a row where I was playing 72 whole competitions and for someone that obviously works during the week now as a teacher it's, you don't really get time to spend with each other at bar weekends so yeah fair play to her she's uh, been pretty supportive and pretty lenient um, right, well, I'm, I know that there's probably hundreds of guys that will be watching this that's listening to your answer that will be saying Stuart give it time Um <laughs> No, that's been great. It's given a bit of an insight into you as a player, so thank you very much. Um, just a wee last few questions, just a quick fire bit. Um, I'm going to ask you five questions. Make it brief. Okay. Starting with, who is your sporting hero? Sporting hero growing up, I'm going to say Monte. Monte as a sporting hero? Yeah, Good. I'm going to say Monte. And why? Because he was just brilliant. I just think, obviously, the player that he was, me growing up, he was obviously Scottish. You've got to have that kind of a, attachment. I know Sandy Lyle's a, a big one for you. Um, yeah, there he is. What makes you think that's just <laughs> There he is. Um, no, I just think he was absolutely amazing. Um, I remember 2005 Open at St Andrews, um, him and Woods going head-to-head and yeah, you just think for a calibre player he was, he was so unlucky not to not to get over the line in, yeah. in a major. Uh, Favourite golfer? McElroy. Uh, uh, McElroy? Yeah. Okay. Is that just, again, he's just head and shoulders when he's on his game? I I, I think he, yeah, I think he's on, when, when every player's on the form, I think he's, he's the best player. Okay. Um, most enjoyable golf course you've ever played? I'm going to say Royal Lytham, but um, it's it's funny I say that because I've never actually played well around it. It's the most demanding golf course, but it's it's phenomenal. Right, OK. Um, fair enough. Right. Most memorable sporting event. Be careful, because I've got an idea what you might be saying, because it's probably the same as mine. But does it start 2012? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, so my favourite sport of memory... Um, let's stick with golf first of all. Has right, okay. To be, has to be Medina. Um, all right, brilliant. A hundred percent. Just sitting on the sofa um, with my dad that night when when that went on, it was just I think any golfing fan in the world. It's yeah, it was it was amazing. 
But for the heavy fans out there, it has to be the 2012 Cup final. What happened in the 2012? Just remind me what happened in the... Just I, briefly. I, um, oh, you don't need to. I'm sure everybody knows. Yeah, just some football match. Aye, ah, good. Um, and just finally, what is your fav- favourite major? It's hard. It's hard to say, but one I'd like to play in, it would be the Open. The one I like watching the most is the Masters. Yeah, I think we're all a little bit like that and we're going to miss it this year, but um, the Masters kicks off the season. We all kind of get a little bit excited when you see the colours. And um, Stuart, thank you very much. That That's was fun. really good. Um, hopefully you guys back home that are watching this are going to take a little bit from it and uh, understand the mentality of what's con- or what Stuart is considered as an elite golfer. Um, and as I say, he had an amazing year last year, so Wish them all the best. If there's any golf played this year, I hope you do really well again. If it's not this year, I'm sure next year you'll kick back into it. And uh, guys, if you're watching it, always give Stuart a wave. He's always happy to talk to anybody. So, all right. Thank you for listening. And thank you very much, Stuart. Appreciate it. Take care. Cheers. Thanks.